Hi. Oh my goodness, how wonderful. Here we are. <laughs> it's exciting. You know, potential home buyers are making some big mistakes. And you know what, you guys, you might not even know. For example, you see a house you love, but you want to pay less. We all do. So, what do you do? You come in with a low ball You're going to be tough. That's good. I'm tough on right? low ball those guys. Wrong. Uh oh. That is so wrong. Here to help us do it right from DeRoche Realty Group and Coldwell Banker Burnett, it's Julie and Daniel DeRoche. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Nice Hi. to have you here. Alrighty, we're going to walk through some common mistakes that a lot of home uh, buyers make, especially first time home buyers. Mistake number one looking at homes before talking to a lender. Now, I could see somebody saying, well, I'm going to find the house first and then I'll go and see if we can afford it. Why is that the wrong order? I have a lot of people, well, we have a lot of people reach out to go look at homes before they talk to a lender. The, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, but think about it. You walk into this house and you love it. Oh, love yeah. it. Fall in love. That sounds yep. so great. And now you want to buy it. Yes. Yeah. Well, without money, you can't do that. That's yeah. true. And unless you have all the cash to buy it, no seller is going to look at your offer and take it serious. So you mm. have to talk to a lender first. You have to get pre approved. Or you can't, you can make the offer, but nobody's going to take it serious. Plus, you should just set your <clears throat> sights on those little search things that you can't even look at the houses that are outside of your range because it just makes you so sad. It'll drive you bananas. <laughs> yeah. And the reality is, if, if you don't have that set up, if somebody else makes an offer, you're going to be behind and you're, you're just not going to get the house. So take care of it first. But there are, there's just as many lenders in this city as there are realtors and stuff like that. So find one that actually knows what they're doing, that's responsive, takes your call, replies to the emails. Because if it's like Sunday at 2 o'clock and you fall in love and you want to buy a house and you don't have a lender that works on the weekends, that makes it tough. Lenders with a good reputation make a bigger difference in getting the offer too. Because if the other oh, yeah. person's realtor sees, oh, this lender makes deals happen, yeah. are they more likely to push their client towards that Absolutely. person? Absolutely. And uh, there's a couple lenders in town that actually have either $5,000 guarantees to the seller or $10,000 guarantees to the seller. So that if the lender didn't do their job right, they're guaranteeing the seller wow. five to ten grand that this is going to close. Okay, that's good huge. golly, that's, that's really nice. All right, here's another mistake that we just talked about uh, in the intro: lowballing your offer. Now we want to do this when we're buying a house because we don't want to pay more than we have to pay. Julie, why will this work against us? Yeah, it's human nature, um, right. especially in this market. It may have worked in past markets, but it's really a seller's market right now. Yeah. So. If you, I have a lot of buyers and they, they'll say, oh, I love the property, we want to make an offer. And I'll sit down with them and, okay, well, what do you want to offer? And it's like 40 grand low. And I'm like, yeah, we're not going to get it. It's yeah. first day on the market. And it really <laughs> backfires. I think um, if, if, we, if they are insistent that we go forward with that offer, the seller gets frustrated. They don't think that they're serious and they don't want to deal with them. And so that's when a seller won't even counter. They're more likely to say, we reject that offer. We're yeah. moving on. And what I've seen is if the buyer comes in reasonably, they're going to be able to negotiate a little bit, maybe. Okay. But if they come in really low, I think they've just they've put a really sour taste in the in the seller's mind about mm -hmm. this buyer that they're not legit. What right. if the house has been on the market for? I mean, you're saying a house has been on the market for a day. What if it's been on the market for 90 days? Do you have a better shot at coming? Yeah, in? if it's been on for 90 days, you can come in lower, but you still don't want to be ridiculous. Well, and I agree with Julie, but. Oh, this you is do, getting yeah. good. Yeah. This, this is good. We're getting good. into your television. There are there are times like I, I'm gonna give. A, I know we don't have a lot of time, so I'm gonna keep it as short yeah, as I can. All the time for you. Yeah, that's not true. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> a couple years ago, a house listed and please don't quote me. It was like 750, 760, and it was like November, and it had been in the market for quite some time. My buyers offered 600. It took us a month of back and forth. We got it for 605. Oh, wow. So it depends on the situation. The house was overpriced to begin with. So yeah, just because sure. it's just because they're asking that, if it's been on the market for a while, it's very possible somebody is overpriced. So you do need your realtor to do an actual analysis so that your offer is accurate. So it's not necessarily about lowballing or making an offer. Do the research and make an actual fair offer. That house was worth six, six and a quarter. Now they were sellers were moving to Florida for the rest of their lives, so we got yeah. it at just the right time. But you do have to really offer properly. That's when it helps to have a knowledgeable uh, realtor on yes. your side who understands price advice. history, comps, and all that kind of stuff. Let's get to some more mistakes, my Sorry. friend. Um, <laughs> that was a mistake that you just made, Daniel, by the way. <laughs> Neg I know, I'm going to pay for it tonight. <laughs> Neglect <laughs> neglecting to have an inspection. Now, a lot of people want to do that, right? To just sort of They're fast track excited. everything. They're excited. We'll figure it out. It'll be fine. Yeah. And Why you, is that a bad idea? Yeah. There, there's so many things. If it's new construction, typically you're going to be fine. But think about things that you can't see as a buyer. You know, things like the roof up in the attic, behind the walls, like moisture damage. There's a lot, septic systems, well systems, city sewers, inside chimneys. Like a sewer line can cost you 10, 15 grand. A chimney can cost you 10 grand. Oh, a bad roof, depending on the house, 10, 15, $20,000. Mm -hmm. Inspections are 500 bucks, 700 bucks, 1,000 mm -hmm. bucks. 
for an awesome inspector. And the good ones, the ones that actually know what they're doing, they've got infrared cameras, they're going to get up and walk that roof, they're going to scope the, ins the sewer lines, they're going to get a camera up in the chimney. Unless you've got all those tools and you really know what you're doing, don't overlook that. Hire somebody to do it. Okay, mistake number four, paying too much attention to how things are decorated. Julie, this has to be a big one when people walk in the door and they're like, oh my gosh, I hate those sofas. And you're thinking the sofas <laughs> are going with the people who are selling the house. Yeah, and I say I've talked more, I've more talked more people out of buying a house for this reason than others because they walk in and if it's really awesome, they fall in love with it, but they're not looking closely at you know how it's constructed what the maintenance things need to be the pictures we're seeing those are the the two same houses uh, you know this house was oh my before. gosh it's just paint and um furniture so so you're you're suggesting that it's not just what elizabeth is talking about oh my goodness i hate that pink wall in the kitchen but they see how beautifully staged it is and think i want this house meanwhile there's a crack yeah. in the ceiling that they don't see because of how nice furniture is going and everything oh, is. Yeah. so, it's so many people that fall, they just overlook all the other stuff because they walk in and they're like oh i love it well, this is how i would decorate it yeah that's, it's both that's, sides. All go that's moving out you know that Couch is not staying there when you work. So don't in. pay too much attention to how good the decorating is or how or bad the decorating yeah. is. Yep. You got to look past that, and that's what you can help people do is kind of envision. Well, that's why Julie's so good because she can see like <clears throat> if you did this to this wall, it yes. would look totally different. She well, came over to our house one time. We got three things changed like when she left. <laughs> She's powerful like that. We want to get to the one final mistake uh, before we leave you, and this has to do with not working with a licensed agent. Now, granted, you are both licensed agents, so you're a bit biased here. But tell the folks at home why that's important because they're. Seem to be other options floating around out there. There are. It's just you really need the guidance. There's so many pieces of it, and it's gotten so complicated. I mean, a purchase agreement now is, I think, like 70 pages long. Yeah. With all the disclosures and stuff. Yeah. It gets so there, you yeah. need someone to advise you. And I think going back to the last one about we are an objective voice when you're making an emotional decision. Yeah. So it's really good to have an expert that knows what they're doing, they're objective, they can talk about resale with you. There's just a lot of stuff that. As a buyer, you would have to understand on your own if you wanted to make a purchase on are your you own. Are you licensed in marriage counseling too? Because I bet you we have to are. Do a lot of that. We, yeah. we do a lot of that. That should happen. Right. That should be their housewarming <laughs> gift and counseling. And that's a good idea. Good. Sessions. Thank you guys. Good to be with Thank you yeah. as always. If you want to avoid those common home buying mistakes, Julie and Daniel would love to help. You can head to TwinCitiesLive.com for a link to DeRoche Realty Group with Coldwell Banker Burnett. Very good. Big thanks to DeRoche Realty Group for sponsoring Twin Cities Live. Okay, after.